All right, so today we're going to look at the relationship between increasing population and desertification and deforestation in Africa. Let's start with some basic definitions here. First of all, deforestation refers to when all the trees in an area are cut clear for farming, animal grazing, or for use as firewood. Now, deforestation can feed into desertification because when deforestation becomes a permanent situation, that opens up the door for desertification. And desertification refers to when farming or grazing land is permanently converted into unusable desert land. And of course, and of course when land becomes unusable to human beings, that is land that you cannot use to grow crops anymore. And of course, uh, that's one of the most devastating blows that you can make to a community is to take away their source of food. So let's talk for a moment about forests. Forests are a critical resource for people throughout the world. In fact, more than a billion people live in or around forests and use those resources for a number of things. They use the forest for their food, for timber, for fuel to cook their food and heat their homes, medicine, income, uh, the, the trees and forests clean the water. You can get building materials from there. And of course, uh, spirituality and recreation comes from forests as well. 70 million indigenous people throughout the world live in remote areas and depend completely on forest resources for their livelihoods. So let's take a look at a typical example of how desertification is caused in Africa. It usually starts with population increase. As the population increases, we have an increasing demand on the resources that are available and a very heavy draw on those resources. So uh, let's, let's take a look at one example. In one example, um, a higher population means there's more need for energy. And since the primary energy source in many parts of Africa is firewood, that means that we see some more deforestation in order for people to have firewood to heat their homes and cook their food. This deforestation means that you no longer have trees and roots to hold together the soil. And with leaves no longer protecting the soil from weather, this of course leads to your loose topsoil being blown away by the wind or washed away by the rain. And that of course is soil erosion. Now, you also uh, have increasing demand for food when you have an increase in population. And um, for this example, let's say that that demand is for cattle. Well, with more demand for cattle, that means you're going to need more cattle, more cows. And uh, in many cases, you're going to see more overgrazing in your grassland areas. So your grasslands suffer from overgrazing. And that means that the roots get eaten, not just the leaves of the grass, but when the cows finish eating the leaves, they're going to be digging down for the roots because uh, you, you have too much cattle on too small a piece of land. And uh, when those roots go away, of course, that means that the less vegetation means there's less protection for the soil from the weather. And of course, your loose topsoil can then be blown away by the wind or washed away by the rain. In both of these cases, these, uh, these different things lead to desertification. So you don't need to take my word for this. You want to see some proof? Let's take a look at some of these satellite images provided for us by the United Nations Environmental Program. Let's start by looking at the population growth around Lake Victoria. So um, this is gonna this is a population density map that we're gonna be looking at. And let me pull up 1960 here. Now, since this is a population density map, the color codes are used to indicate how high the population is in each of these given areas. The areas in red, the red coding indicates an area that has more than 100 people per square kilometer. Orange indicates a medium population density between 25 and 100 people per square kilometer. And yellow indicates low population density. This is what it looks like in 1960. Not a huge amount of uh, population around Lake Victoria, except perhaps on the northwest corner of the lake uh, in Kenya. That's 1960, though. Here's 1970. It's getting a little bit a little bit more crowded around Lake Victoria. Well, let's take a look here at 1980. Ooh, yes, a lot more red. A lot more red and orange around Lake Victoria. How about 1990? Yep, yep. And how about 2000? Very little yellow left here. 
The entire area seems to be covered in either red or orange, and the red is growing. Here's 2005. Here's 2010. And this is what it looks like in 2015. We have an area that has gone from relatively low population density to a very high population density area in not a terribly long amount of time. Um, now, one of the results of this, of course, is we have uh, an extensive deforestation in the areas around Lake Victoria. The, all these people are going to uh, need to use those trees as resources. Now, if you take a look at this picture down here at the bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to zoom that in a little bit. Um, what we have here is um, a group of women out there trying to collect firewood. This is actually a um, traditional social role for women in Africa. And for the women there, um, they gather firewood to earn money to feed their kids, to take care of their families. And unfortunately, because of the extensive deforestation, they're having to walk farther and farther from their villages each day to find any firewood at all. And that means that they are exposed to danger that whole time, and they are away from their families for very long amounts of time trying to find firewood. And it's only going to get worse. All right, so here we have uh, some satellite imagery from a place called Thai National Park in Cote d'Ivoire. That's also known as the Ivory Coast, by the way. And um, the Ivory Coast has some of the world's worst deforestation. Now, in this picture here, um, what I'd like you to notice is that uh, there are some black dotted lines that indicate the borders of this national park. Now, a national park means that you've got park rangers that guard the trees and resources in the park. However, the areas outside the black dotted lines, the areas outside the national park are unguarded and therefore uh, susceptible to, um, to whatever the population wants to do with it. Now, if you look at the area right there, it's kind of a, this strip in the middle there of a uh, area that's not part of the national park. Um, take a look at the colors. I want you to see the colors here. Any area that is dark green, dark green indicates places with trees. Any area that's light green, those areas are going to be uh, grass and brown. Let's take a look at Madagascar. Now, Madagascar, of course, uh, famous for its rainforest. And uh, this area here is, uh, pic this area here, we have a picture from 1973. You see all that dark green, dark green throughout this area there, except for perhaps on that, that mountainy, hilly area there. Lots of dark green showing extensive rainforest. Well, that's 1973. Now, let's take a look at how the color changes in 2001. Look at all that brown. Look at all that gray. So much of that uh, forest are gone now. Forest, forest is gone. Uh, in this case, uh, they were burned clear to make room for rice cultivation. All right, let's turn to Kenya. This is around an area called Lake Nakuru in Kenya. Um, by the way, a site of uh, some of the largest concentrations of flamingos in the world. Um, again, let's take a look at the colors. Lots of green here in 1973. Yes, that's a fair amount of gray and brown too, but a lot of green in this picture in 1973. Now let's take a look at 2000. Look at all the green that is no longer there. Look at all this brown and gray that we see. More examples of deforestation. Now let's take a look at some evidence of desertification. Now this is a ravine in Senegal. Now that you're seeing this is a black and white picture, so we're not going to be looking at color this time. Instead of focusing on color, this time I want you to look at texture. Now here we have a black and white uh, photograph from 1965. Um, this is an area of plateaus, and um, one of the things you're going to notice uh, the area looks kind of fuzzy. It looks kind of fuzzy. It's not fuzzy because the picture's out of focus. It's fuzzy because we can't really see the ground. The fuzz that we see, that is, uh, that's all the brush and other vegetation. 
that is obscuring the ground. You can see, you know, some of the crevices there up in the top part there, but for the most part, we can't really see the ground. What we're seeing is what looks like fuzz in the picture, but that is in fact uh, bushland. Let's take a look at the newer version of this picture. This is 1999. Now, doesn't this look different? See how you can see every little crack in the ground, every little crack and crevice. Well, the reason we can see that is there's no vegetation there anymore. There are no more bushes. There are no more plants. This area has uh, become desert now. It is no longer um, usable by human beings. This is a this is a desert area now, and that is a, unfortunately a permanent change in 1999. The fact of the matter is desertification is one of the worst environmental catastrophes that can befall human beings. Because when your land when your land becomes desert, it's it's barren. It is unable to support agriculture. And this, of course, is devastating for human communities because that takes away your available supply of food. Now I want to leave you today with this picture. I'm going to ask you to look at this picture for a minute. See if you can create some sort of a caption to help capture this moment.